Does your live stream sound like this? You breathed your life in creation. You walked among your creator. Do you want it to sound more like this? Hello, I'm Stephen Ballast. Welcome to my channel where I explore worship technology solutions. This video is part two of a five part series where I'm gonna show you how you can make your live stream audio sound better. I firmly believe that audio is just as important if not more important than your video quality when it comes to creating an engaging live stream for the viewers of your church service. In my previous video, I made the case for why you need to have an isolated separate mix for your live stream. In this video, I'm gonna show you the physical setup you need to create that completely isolated mix for your live stream using a DAW on a computer. I'll show you what equipment you need, how to connect it all together, and how to get it configured and working. If you use the equipment I recommend and follow these steps, you'll be able to get your own system up and running. If you already have some equipment or you want to use something different than what I'm showing, that's fine. Do your research and it will probably work. Just be aware that some of the things I'm going to show along the way may be different for you. Also, I will say kind of as a warning up front because it's possible to install a DAW on just about any computer and try this out. I've seen a number of people try and dabble with mixing their live stream in a DAW and get frustrated with it and come to the conclusion that it doesn't work well. You have to be all in. You need to make the right investments to make the whole system work, or yeah, you're just gonna frustrate yourself. If you use the equipment I'm gonna show you, it will work. And I have a link down in the description of this video to a PDF document you can download that has the diagrams and links to all the equipment and cables you'll need to build this system. All right, let's get started. I'm gonna step through the different components we need to build this system and then we'll get them configured. We're gonna use Dante to split all of our channels from our front of house board. That does create a requirement that you need a console at front of house that has Dante capability, or that that capability can be added through an expansion card. Most digital mixers today above the really bottom entry level boards do offer at least an expansion slot that you can add a Dante card to. Dante is a digital audio network. It's just a way to route channels of audio over a regular data network at really low latency. So the next thing we'll need is a networking switch to connect our equipment together. There are two requirements for this switch. One, it needs to be Dante compatible, and two, it needs to have PoE. The reason for that is because some of the devices we'll be using in our system need to be powered from a PoE switch. So the connection from our front of house console to the switch is just a regular cat cable. If your Dante network is gonna be as simple as what I'm showing you, I'd recommend placing the switch in your mix room and running the longer cable between your front of house console and the switch. Because that's just one cable run and we're gonna end up with multiple things connected to the switch here in our mix room. Next, we'll need a computer to run our DAW software on and the computer needs to be connected to the same switch as the mixer. For the simplicity of making sure any data traffic doesn't get in the way of our Dante audio, I like to keep my data network and Dante network separate. So I have this simple of a setup for my Dante network, mixer to switch and switch to computer. Then on my computer, I've installed a second network card that allows me to connect to my data network for access to other computers and the internet. You don't have to do this. Dante will work just fine on a network with your data. You could just connect this switch to your regular data network instead, but depending on how complex and congested that network is, you could run into problems and have to do more in-depth networking configuration. So keeping them separate from me just simplifies things. Let's talk for a minute about the requirements for the computer that you choose for running your DAW. Mixing live in a DAW is a CPU intensive task it requires CPU power. Unless you are also recording the multitracks at the same time, hard drive size and speed doesn't matter. RAM largely also doesn't matter, although at this time, I wouldn't buy a production computer with less than 32 gigs of RAM. 
The main thing your DAW will leverage from your computer for mixing live is the CPU. How much CPU you need will depend on two things. First, how many channels of audio you're mixing. The CPU requirement for mixing 16 to 24 channels is going to be vastly different than mixing 64, 96, or even up to 128 channels. The second thing affecting your CPU is how many and what plugins you use. Plugins take CPU, so the more plugins you use, the more CPU you'll need. And your choice of plugins will also make a difference. In other words, some plugins are just more CPU hungry than others. I was consulting with a church recently where simply swapping out one plugin in their DAW solved all of their audio glitching and dropout problems. I have three computer recommendations based on channel count and plugin usage listed in my PDF document. But I also have some links in the description of this video to searches on Amazon where you can get some really good deals on slightly older models that are still perfectly capable machines. Another decision to make about your computer, and this relates to CPU and channel count as well, and that's how you're going to get the Dante audio into your computer. There are two methods for this. The first is cheaper, and that's to use Dante Virtual Sound Card, or DVS. This is software that runs on your computer, and you usually get a license for DVS with any Dante option cards that you purchase for your front of house console. Or you can purchase a license if you need to. DVS, when it's running on your computer, acts like it's a hardware sound device on your system. But it's just using the system's ethernet port to route audio in and out. So in your DAW, it will show up as an audio device. The second option is to use the Dante PCI card from Focusrite. This is an actual audio device that's installed in your system, and the big difference is channel count and CPU usage. Dante Virtual Sound Card brings the Dante data in through the computer's Ethernet port and then processes it to be audio channels that your computer can use. So that processing takes place on your CPU. The Virtual Sound Card lets you configure it for different channel counts up to 64 channels, but really the channel count you can achieve will be based on your CPU. With the PCI card, it handles all the processing of the incoming data on the card and really is an audio device on your system. So to your computer, it's just dealing with the audio channels like it's any other audio device. It doesn't have to deal with processing the incoming Dante data. With the PCI card, you can use up to 128 channels. Now look, with the processing power in computers today, processing lots of channels of audio really isn't that big of a deal. But any computer does have a budget for its CPU power, especially since we're trying to mix in real time with as low a latency as possible. Processing the audio channels in Dante Virtual Sound Card, then processing those channels in your DAW, and processing all your plugins in your DAW, that can start to add up. So to answer the obvious question, do I need the PCI card or can I use Dante Virtual Sound Card? Well, again, it depends. I'd say up to 32 channels with a recent i7 processor, you're not going to have any problems using DVS. Obviously, if you're going to be mixing anything greater than 64 channels, you'll have to use the PCI card. Now between 32 and 64 channels with DVS, just be sure you have a really fast CPU. And if your CPU starts to limit you, that may be an indication that adding the PCI card would be a help. When we get to the next video and set up Reaper, which is the DAW that we'll be using, I'll talk more about how you can check your CPU usage and be sure you won't get any dropouts or glitches in your audio. So if these videos are helpful, be sure and subscribe to my channel so you won't miss that. The next thing we'll need in our system is a way to monitor our audio from the DAW for our operator to hear what we're actually mixing. To do that, we'll use these AVIO devices from Audinate. They have a CAT connection on one side to connect to your Dante network switch, and then some form of audio input or output on the other side, depending which model you get. And these are the devices that require PoE power from our switch. For monitoring, we'll use the two-channel analog output version, and that output can be connected directly to your monitor speakers with XLR cables. But you may want to run it into a little mixer first. That will give you volume control for the monitors and also the ability to listen on headphones if you want. Right now at our church, we're using the Kali Audio LP6 Studio monitors. They work fine, 
I'm not gonna say you need to get these speakers or these speakers will make all the difference in your mix. Because really, I think the speakers are a lot less important than the room. Don't get me wrong, these speakers are great, and if you need speakers, these are a good choice. You should be mixing on monitor speakers. But the single biggest difference we made in getting our live stream mix to translate, and by translate, I mean getting what we hear in here when we're mixing to sound the same everywhere else. When you listen at home on AirPods or headphones or on a TV or in your car, the biggest difference was getting acoustic treatment in our room. So all that to say, one thing I've learned is that I would rather buy cheaper monitor speakers and put money into treating my room than buy really expensive nice speakers and put them in an untreated room. The last thing we need to do is get our audio routed to our video. We're gonna use another AVIO device for this. You could use another analog two-channel output and connect that to your video switcher's audio inputs. But let me make a bit of a side note here. Since this video series is all about getting the best audio possible for your live stream, and I'm gonna gloss over this quickly, but I know that a lot of churches are using ATEM video switchers. And there is a known quirk, I'll call it, with the way that the ATEMs handle the volume level of audio inputs. And this can make it hard to get a good volume level to your live stream. What I've found works better is to inject my audio into the SDI output of the ATEM switcher. I take the SDI output from the ATEM and run it into an audio to SDI injector. And then that SDI output is what feeds my SDI distribution for recording overflow into our live stream encoder. Another advantage of doing this is that the audio to SDI injector has an AES digital audio input. So we can use the AES version of the AVIO devices. And in doing that, our audio doesn't have to be converted to analog. It stays digital the whole way through our signal path. Once we have all these devices connected together through our switch, we're ready to do some configuration and route our Dante audio channels. To do that, we're gonna use a program called Dante Controller. This is a free download from the Audinate website. You can run this on any computer that has a network port connected to your Dante network. And of course, the easiest thing to do is run it right on your live mixing computer. But a quick note if you're using the Dante PCI card, it can't be used for control data. So if the PCI card is the only connection your computer has to the Dante network, like me on this computer, where I've used the built-in network port to connect to my data network, and the PCI card is my only connection to Dante for audio, I can't use this computer for configuring Dante with Dante controller, unless I temporarily move that second connection off of my data network and connect it to my Dante network. If you're using Dante Virtual Sound Card through your computer's Ethernet port, then this isn't an issue. That one connection handles both audio and control. When you launch Dante Controller, the first thing you need to do is select the Ethernet port that is connected to Dante. Click the network icon and select that Ethernet port for the primary interface from the drop-down list. Click OK, and now we should see all of our Dante devices populate into this display. But before we start routing audio, there are two things we'll want to configure first. We need to set up the device that will be our master clock, and we'll also want to check the sample rate for each of our devices. Go to the clock status tab, and generally you'll want your main source of audio, in this case the Dante card that is in our console at front of house, to be the preferred master. That means all the other devices on the network will set their clock to that device. Then we'll also want our Dante card in the console to get its clock from the mixer itself, not from Dante. So we'll click the enable sync to external. That sounds confusing, but external means external to the Dante network. So we're telling the card to go get its clock from our console. So we should see the Dante interface in our console has an external clock source and is the master. Everything else is getting their clock from Dante and our slaves. To check the sample rate, double click on each device and go to its device config tab and check that this sample rate setting here is the same for all your devices. Most likely you'll want this set to 48K. Once that's configured for all your devices, now we can go back to the routing tab and create our routing between devices. Let me explain my philosophy on routing. 
we have essentially three patch bays where we can cross connect and route our audio channels. On our console, we can assign channels to the outputs of the Dante card. In Dante, we can make connections from an output channel of a device to an input channel of another device. And then when we get into Reaper, our DAW, we can route a Dante input to a channel of the mixer. That is a lot of opportunity for mistakes and confusion. So in order to keep things as simple and clean as possible, I have what I like to call a one-to-one -one policy when it comes to patching Dante. On my console, channel one gets routed to Dante channel one output, channel two to Dante output two, and so forth. Then in Dante controller, I patch things one-to-one -one as well. So Dante output one from the console gets routed to Dante input one of the computer and so forth. The only place I'll do any cross patching is in Reaper itself. So for example, that's where I'll put the bass guitar on the channel I want. For me, the bass is on channel 32 of my console. So that's patched to output 32 of the Dante card. Channel 32 of the card is routed to input channel 32 of the computer. Then in Reaper, I can take input channel 32 from Dante and assign that to where I want it in the mixer. Following this one-to-one -one patch makes troubleshooting and setting up your patch so much easier and less confusing. So to patch that in Dante controller, this Allen & Heath port 1 is my Dante card that is sending audio out from my console. And this Reaper live device is my live mixing computer. So the top is the transmitting or sending device, my console, and on the left here is the receiving device, the computer. To create a patch, just click in the little square to connect an output channel to an input channel. And you'll see this little green check mark appear once the route has been made and audio is flowing between them. You can see when this is patched one to one, it makes this really nice straight line and it's super easy to see if something's wrong. Once I've created this one to one patch between my console and the computer, I never wanna be changing this routing here in Dante controller if I can at all help it. Once you've created this routing, all the Dante devices store their configuration and remember their routing. Even if they're power cycled, as long as those two devices come back on the network, they'll start sending audio to each other. You really don't need to use Dante controller again unless you add a new Dante device or something like that. Let's look at the AVIO devices. They are receiving audio from output one and two of the Reaper Live device. Some people may get confused by this. They say, wait a minute, I'm using channel one and two back here as inputs from my console. But each Dante device has a set of input and output channels. Meaning for me with the PCI card, there are 128 inputs and 128 outputs that are exclusive from each other. Channel one input is different from channel one output. So if we look at all my AVIO devices, they're all getting their audio from the channel one and two output of the Reaper Live device. Which of course later when it comes to our routing in Reaper, we'll need to route our main mix left and right channels to Dante output one and two. And we'll see that in the next video where I'll walk you through setting up Reaper for live mixing and I'll show you my mix template and how it's all set up and we'll talk about some of the things I've learned over the years of mixing live in a DAW. Until next time, bye.